Welcome to the Continuum Lab. I finished the last of the instruments in the Continuum Lab instrument kit and to celebrate that I wrote a little song, which apparently has already started, so I'll explain afterwards. For now, introducing the Clixophone. I think you should know. The Continuum Lab instrument kit is the king, king of the, the show. show. I'm only here to generate interest in it, so bring on the flow. flow. And let's go straight to the interesting bit, break it down. That's the clixophone, made with the click based on a sax. It's my favorite, cause it's the max that I flex on the tracks. Hey, I'm just texting the facts. I got high specs on the axe, with the knack for detecting the hacks, for the tech that affects on the tracks. But you are my guest, so relax, let us continue on. I'll give you the grand tour of the whole continuum. So many instruments that I want your opinion on. Do you have a favorite? If you do, I can send you one. Just place an order and it'll find its way to ya. Or you can be a wide viewer maker that makes do ya. No, don't tell me, dude, I can see that shit straight through ya. You'd rather be do it yourself, lend that some other self do ya but for a limited time you can buy one of mine at the shop at continuumlab.com all i'm trying is to race a dime with my prototype so that i can stop i don't see you write that down that's www.continuumlab.com if you're broke then get some money from your mom go buy a kid plus instrument while there's still some around help me get the click off the ground and if you get intense because it's too expensive for you and your mom then wait please listen to this before you get busy with online hate once i ship a few of these and finances are great I'll be selling just the kit as well at a much lower rate peace As I was saying, welcome to the Continuum Lab. First of all, a couple of words about the recording that you just heard. I used two different versions of the new Clixophone to record both bass and drums as well as the melody and solo. The only other instrument is the Click MIDI ukulele, which is featured in another video here on the channel. There's a link down in the description. Each instrument is recorded continuously with no editing except for the first bit where I repeat the ukulele accompaniment for the spoken intro. I'm working on several other original songs in various styles using the click instruments, so keep an eye on this channel for more on that. Uh, one more important message before we get into the clixophone. As of this moment, uh, when I publish this video, the shop is actually still not open. Well, it looks like it's open, but everything is sold out. So I'm sorry if you went there in vain, but be patient. I'll be opening up very soon. And yes, that means that the song, which tells you to go there right now, is somewhat inaccurate. Except, of course, if you're seeing this a few weeks into the future, in which case, forget I even mentioned it. These are not the clicks you are looking for. Delays are, by their very nature, hard to predict. So I will make no promises except this one. I will make a video specifically to announce the launch of the click when it does happen, with a catchy title like, mm, launch of the click. So if you're subscribed here to the Continuum Lab YouTube channel, then you will know about it. And if you follow me over on Instagram, then you will also know about it. Okay, now on to the main feature. If you've watched any of my recent Continuum Lab videos, then you will know that the Clixophone is the final piece of the Continuum Lab instrument kit puzzle. The last missing instrument in the collection, my own preferred vehicle, so to speak, for flexing on the tracks, made with the click, based on a sax. <laughs> It also brings the Continuum Lab full circle back to the instrument that I was working on before I came up with the click and which started this whole crazy journey and that is the open horn MIDI system. This is the last open horn that I made and this is the new Clixophone. It's easy to see the similarities if we put them next to each other. Lots of differences as well. The bottom line is that the Clixophone is basically a simpler, more streamlined version of the open horn. 
Just like on most of the click instruments, there are some options that you can choose from on this new one by inserting and removing a couple of jumpers on the breakout board. One option is to switch pitch bend on or off. Just like on the click capacitive keyboard, pitch bend is controlled with two capacitive sensors, which are situated here on the mouthpiece and they're activated with your upper and lower lip. The other option turns on or off a set of optional side keys, just like these on the original open horn. And just like the open horn, which came from a long line of iterations and development, the new click instrument also comes with several variations, which help me inch closer to this final design. In the case of the Clixophone, I demonstrate three different levels of making. And as always, the progression starts with the humble cardboard prototype. Whatever aesthetics and form you plan to end up with for your instrument, I really recommend that you start with something simple like this. This particular prototype was the first test build and it doesn't do pitch bend and it doesn't have the extra side keys. But other than that, even if it doesn't look like much, it honestly works great. That's the very simple but very responsive bottle top breath sensor and these handmade keys on here honestly work just great. So after finishing this I could immediately see lots of possible improvements but rather than keep hacking away at the cardboard I stepped it up to a more permanent setup. So this one is made out of corrugated polypropylene and some 3D printed bits and pieces. The keys on here are the result of years of iterating different keys for my many MIDI wind instruments, and they are by far the best I've made yet. Each key contains two printed pieces, and they come in three different sizes, as well as a slanted version for this kind of result here. These keys are basically the same ones as on the bamboo version, except that here they have a flat bottom, and the other ones have a curve on them to match the round bamboo. I'll go into much more detail in the tutorial for this instrument and others. And in the next few weeks, I will be publishing all of the 3D models for everything 3D printed that you see in my videos. Like for example, these end pieces here, which hold everything together. They're basically the same as on the various click keyboards, except this is the most narrow version, which makes for a smaller instrument body. The other big change is that the new design has a large round cutout for inserting a mouthpiece instead of the small hole that was on earlier versions. The mouthpiece that's currently on here is the pitch bend enabled one. And as you can see it's made to fit here perfectly and locks into place by twisting like this. The breath sensor itself is inside the main box of the instrument and it's the same one that I've used in previous instruments as well. I have several other new mouthpiece designs as well based on my bottle top design which is great for maximizing sensitivity and responsiveness and they can be made extremely simple as well with no silicone tubes or other externals but those designs don't include pitch bend capability. I've also updated the uh, 3D models for the end pieces for the melodica and other keyboard designs to include this new mouthpiece concept. Anyway, the second Clixophone prototype includes both options. That means both the pitch bending mouthpiece as well as the uh, side keys here. So it can do some pretty neat stuff. Thank you. 
And that brings me back to the bamboo model. This is the first and only one of my click instrument prototypes which is not made mainly out of cardboard or plastic. And there are good reasons for that. Let me explain. I've been working with bamboo for years, so I happen to have a beautiful piece lying around from my earlier projects, plus the minimum skills to do something with it. Oh yeah, and a 3D printer of course. But you might have completely different tools or a different skill set than I do, uh, and so your clixophone would be based on that. Maybe you want to cast it in wax, maybe try knitting, you could make it out of clay, wood carving. The click gives you the necessary electronics uh, to make the instrument, but it doesn't require that you make exactly what I did. That's why the click tutorials for all of these instruments include several different examples, because I'm trying to communicate a set of techniques, not a specific finished product. This one represents the natural conclusion for the clixophone for myself personally. It has the pitch bent mouthpiece that I love, but no side keys, and the slim and streamlined shape is made possible by leaving out the breakout board. The final result combines my specific skills and experience with bamboo and 3D printing to make something aesthetically on point while successfully incorporating the click and its focus on simplicity and functionality. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with it, but, and here comes the disclaimer, it's still a prototype. So the cables that connect each sensor are jammed in there like it's nobody's business. And if I open this up, then I actually have to recalibrate it afterwards because all of the cables have moved around relative to each other. Of course, recalibrating on a click instrument is super easy, so it's really not a big deal. But it's still a prototype. So when I play for a while, humidity starts to build up behind this plastic here in the mouthpiece where the lip sensors are. There are ways that I could fix this, but of course these sensors don't really care about getting wet. It would only be a problem if it gets wet enough for them to short out against each other. That hasn't happened yet, and I don't think it's likely to actually happen. If it did happen, then I'd just dry them off and keep playing. But it's still a prototype. So the finish is a little bit less than perfect in some places, like here at the end of the bamboo, where some of the fibers have broken loose and separated from the edge. Or on this other one, where some of my cutting and gluing was a little bit less than perfect, of course, these details don't affect the functionality at all, but it's still a prototype. This is the case for all of the instruments that I make using the click, and uh, it's really important for me to communicate this before I start selling them. Now, when I say that these are prototypes, I mean that they are fully functional demonstration models, in the sense that I use these to demonstrate how you can make MIDI instruments for yourself. They are not guaranteed to offer the necessary stability for professional use, but they are guaranteed to facilitate all kinds of tinkering. On the other hand, if we use the clixophone as an example, it is extremely responsive and fun to play and pretty stable. I would personally have no problem at all using this in a professional setting in its current state. But of course, I only feel comfortable with that because I made this thing and so I'm completely aware of its strengths and weaknesses, plus I pay attention to things like calibration and such, which is really important on these prototype instruments. The electronics and techniques that I use in the click are certainly good enough to make a fully professional instrument. But if I wanted to do that, then I would start optimizing for stability by changing a few things. First, I'd optimize the wiring inside to get rid of all the folded up bits of cable. Then I'd solder everything together instead of plugging in cables like I do now. Then I'd change the program on the chip, which right now contains the code for a whole bunch of different instruments. Then I'd probably hard code some values onto each sensor instead of having them completely dependent on calibration. Then I might start changing things in general to fit my specific use case. Maybe think about incorporating a display and menu system. But that's not how I would start building an instrument and it's definitely not how I would teach it. And so that's not really what the click is about. The click is about starting from scratch and making instruments that work. The concept is simple enough to allow you to get started with basic materials and techniques, but also powerful enough to eventually be able to customize your own thing completely. The instruments that I show you in the tutorials and that I'll be selling are basically snapshots of my own personal journey of instrument development. So please keep that in mind before you go and buy one. But of course, if you already know exactly what I mean, then you know definitely just go and buy one at continuumlab.com once the shop is open. And that's it for today. You can keep up with news on the project right here on the Continuum Lab YouTube channel and also follow along over on Instagram, also as Continuum Lab. Take care until next time and I'll see you in the Continuum.